All right. I'll, I'll try to be even louder then. So my name's Merrick Schaefer. I work at USAID where I lead the mobile data team in the Global Development Lab. Um, I was a software developer for about a decade in the private sector uh, before I found myself at UNICEF, uh, where I was one of the co-founders of the UNICEF Innovation Team. So I'm approaching a decade of experience of trying to make data systems work in some of the most difficult conditions you can imagine. Rural settings with limited connectivity and very poor management accountability, ad hoc uh, complexities that arise on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so with data collection here, I'm gonna kind of frame out a few different ways to think about data collection that might be useful. Um, I think the first is I'm gonna build off of what Adam presented this morning during his presentation, which is sort of active data collection, where you're asking people to go out and collect data, whether that be on forms that later get digitized through, through manual ways or through a system like Captricity, uh, or whether it's actually done with uh, smart devices, such as, uh, uh, as tablets, or you can even do it with SMS. Uh, where you can write codes in the SMSs themselves, such as B for boys uh, and a number, if you want to count the number of boys who are attending a health facility. So that's an active form of data collection. There's a, there's, a, there's a secondary way of thinking about data collection, which is a passive form of data collection. And so this can arise when you're using digital systems that leave trails behind them for actual service delivery. And this is my favorite form of data collection. So for example, if you develop a results delivery tool uh, that develops, say, an HIV or a Ebola or a tuberculosis or a cholera result that gets sent to a health center to a patient, uh, and you develop the ability for that to be received by someone, you then can create a chain of accountability and see what's happening inside the system. And so from systems like this, like a referral system I was just exploring in Indonesia, you can actually figure out which of the midwives who were referring mothers who were having problems during uh, women giving birth uh, uh, had the highest level of fatalities associated with the woman that was giving it. You can see which hospitals reject women due to their insurance. You can see which hospitals are correlated with the highest fatality rates, and you can expose an incredible amount of, of data just from that simple tool that wasn't designed to collect or display data. The third sort of data, and I think this is something that, that these digital tools really open up for the first time ever, is data from unexpected sources. So when you look at tools such as uh, UNICEF's U-Report, which is a sort of a social network that, ha that, that gets youth to report on the conditions on, in, in their lives and ask them sort of weekly questions, uh, that, that tool has been used effectively to ask questions uh, to them that they don't perceive as data collection. They perceive it as, as expressing their opinions about their community but it gives a whole new voice and a whole new set of people to contribute their messages in. Other ways of doing this that are a little more formal are getting uh, you know, the communities, uh, 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 structures themselves, pastors in the communities. There was a group out of United Methodist that did a lot of work with pastors for social mobilization during the Ebola crisis. Well, those groups can also be used to feed information back in. So sort of thinking about unexpected audiences that can be contributing to data, not quite the level of like everyone's tweeting in villages in a lot of these countries and contexts, but the levels where we're actually designing social mobilization tools that allow a wider set of participants in the conversation. So I think that there's a lot in the data collection, collection front. There's a way more areas than just those three, but I think those three are good sort of areas to kind of start to, to kind of push around is how do we take advantage of those? How do we mix and match them? How can they be compared to, to expose um, the irregularities that might point to that something, something like a, a pandemic is starting to emerge? Uh, and so with that, um, cool. I think we'll transition into the activity itself. Thank you, Mark.